The Great Earth Biennial, uh, which is um, started as a partnership and continues to be the partnership with the Gateway Foundation, a uh, foundation based in St. Louis that supports local artists and art. Um, the Contemporary and the Ga Gateway came together uh, to create the Great Rivers Biennial, which is a, an award exhibition for three local emerging artists. Um, and the purpose and the mission of the Great Rivers Biennial has always been to give these artists um, the uh, support to mount a major exhibition on a scale that they've never realized before. Um, and for us and for Gateway, um, it's so important that this exhibition um, continues to thrive because this is all about supporting our local artists and art who make up our community, who um, make St. Louis what it is. Um, this is our audience, but also our kind of lifeblood. Um, our a, a significant part of our mission of the contemporary is to support lo local artists and art through a number of artist opportunities like the Flat Files, open studios, but the Great Rivers Biennial is really the most significant scale uh, program that we produce. The Great Rivers Biennial 2010 is now in its fourth year. This is the fourth round of the biennial. Um, and for each, we invite three distinguished curators as jurors um, to select the winning artists. This year it was Douglas Fogel, the chief curator at the Hammer Museum at UCLA in Los Angeles, um, Laura Stewart from Site Santa Fe, um, and Melissa Franklin, who is the Director of Artist Fellowships at the Pew Charitable Trust in Philadelphia. Um, they, this, they were a tremendous lineup. They were wonderful to work with. And what happens is that for each of these rounds, we bring in the jurors for a two-day jury process, which is a closed jury. They review the submissions of over 200 artists, and that um, the number of submissions grows each year, um, certainly because of the success of this program. And they looked at uh, some really tremendous projects and portfolios and selected what they thought were the three best representatives of um, contemporary art making in St. Louis. Uh, the biennial is an open call, so basically anyone in St. Louis who is a working artist can submit their portfolio. The winners this year are Sarah Frost, Cameron Fuller, and Martin Brave. And each of them have very disparate, distinct practices. Two years ago when we had the Great Rivers Biennial, the three artists were producing projects that could be, that aligned in some way and, and, and most explicitly along the thread of drawing. So we mounted an exhibition that foregrounded the practice of drawing um, because each of their exhibitions approached that technique from a different perspective. This year, the projects are entirely discreet and distinct, um, and they'll all be very interesting. I'm really looking forward to the installation period and seeing what the, what the, how all of this will be realized. Um, to tell you a little bit more about the award itself, what happens when the three winners are selected, they each receive $20,000. Um, this is a now $5,000 each, more than the award had been in previous years. Um, and this makes up one of the largest or most significant prizes um, in the States for a biennial exhibition of its kind. Um, so each of these artists receives $20,000, which allows them, hopefully, um, the chance to take a sabbatical from their teaching practice, for example, um, and also to produce something on a scale that they've never realized before because they can contribute um, significant funds towards a new project. And they're given about six or eight months to conceive of a new exhibition made up of an entirely new work. Um, and the Great Rivers Biennial takes over our space at the Contemporary. So we are devoting our entire season to this exhibition and programming that's um, in some way affiliated with local art or music or food, um, all to celebrate St. Louis and the arts of St. Louis. What you'll see when you enter into the space is Martin's series of drawings. Um, he has been, for uh, the last several years, cataloging these keywords from Amazon.com, um, Art Forum, which is an arts magazine, um, but more particularly Amazon, and it's you know through these various literary genres. And in particular, in this project, he's searched for the keyword God, and it's come up with 
you know, hundreds of thousands of different titles. Um, and what he's done is to create these, what look like these seismological, um, very technical abstract drawings, but what in fact they are, are this list of these catalogs of titles that are all organized by their distinctive genres, literary genres. Um, so, you know, what Martin has, what you'll find in this really spare, elegant room are these monumental drawings that have these really delicate, precise drawings in this, um, in this organized in the center. Uh, and this work is all about language um, and the accumulation of data and how data is registered um, and also how we respond to um, kind of to particularly loaded signifiers like the word God um, and how that translates to the drawn form. It'll be a really beautiful exhibition and he's making 28 drawings in total, I think, um, 28 or 29. Um, so you'll really have a, a comprehensive look at a single project. Um, and it'll be a beautiful use of the space. I'm very excited about that. And then um, you'll enter into Sarah Frost's exhibition. Sarah's an artist who's been working for, for many years with found materials, often outmoded technological hardware or domestic appliances. And she creates these monumental installations um, that are in part architectural or environmental. Um, she'll build a wall out of, um, out of keyboard keys, for example. Um, and you really have this sense of kind of grand scale installation work made out of, made out of found discarded objects. Um, she's, this exhibition marks a real shift for her. She's still creating this, this installation. It will be a kind of suspended cloud in one of our large galleries. And she's really taking her cues from our building's architecture, from the skylights. Um, but the, the objects are made up of handcrafted um, paper guns that she has made um, over the last several, many months. And they're all, um, I mean, they represent all kinds of artillery and weaponry that some may recognize from games like World of Warcraft or actual um, assault weapons from, you know, that you might see on TV. Um, especially, I mean, if you're a gun aficionado, you'll recognize all of these pieces. And it's been interesting being in studio visits with her lately because she's developed this whole vocabulary for um, artillery that she didn't have before working on this project. So it's been a real research project for her as well. But the, the guns themselves, um, the technique for building the guns, entirely out of paper and tape, have come from these YouTube videos that she found online of young kids making instructional videos for building paper guns. And they're all incredibly elaborate um, and technical. And <laughs> she's really, again, developed this language for talking about it, learning, um, learning this craft entirely from these YouTube videos um, from these kids who um, who are self-producing these, these instructional documents, essentially. So Sarah has been building these guns, and she'll make a, a room-filled installation with just the guns, um, which I anticipate from afar will look somewhat abstract, really light. You know, you'll have this sense of um, you know, delicate suspension. And then you, get, you approach it, and you start to see, um, you, you st you start to register the details, and it takes on a very different meaning. And then across, you'll turn a corner, and you'll see a line of photographic stills from these YouTube videos. It was important for her to keep those two elements of the project separate, so that you have this encounter with the installation on the one hand, and then, and then this close-up look at the videos on the other, but they weren't combating each other aesthetically. Um, so, you know, that's her, that will be her project. And then, of course, there's Cameron Fuller. Cameron is, um, has been thinking about this project for a long time, uh, since before he won the Great Rivers Biennial Prize. I mean, this is, of course, a, um, a, key, a key element of the Great Rivers Biennial, is that it, um, that it, it becomes a motive for young artists to stay in St. Louis. You know, I've heard this from other winners before, too, that they, they decided to stay in St. Louis after grad school or to move back to St. Louis after grad school um, 
with the hopes of winning the Great Earth Biennial because they can spend some time building their portfolios, submitting, and then it gives them a chance to, again, to realize something on a scale that they've never been able to, that they haven't achieved before, and gives them a platform for making their work visible to a public that's not only local, but national and international. Um, so Cameron has been, has been conceiving of this project for a long time, and this is a project that he hasn't been able to realize on a scale like this before. Um, he's essentially building a um, uh, fantastical museum within our museum. It takes from the aesthetics and methodologies of natural art history museums and science museums and cabinets of curiosities, Wunderkammer, um, and he's creating this environment that you meander through. Um, he's really guiding your, his intention really is to guide the visitor's um, experience through this um, dark and unusual um, and, and what will be a kind of theatrical or dramatic um, stage set. Cameron has a background in building, um, in theater, uh, theater construction from I think just when he graduated from high school and that's informed all of his work to some extent. He builds these architectural environments. He started to be interested in taxidermy lately. So what you'll see in the exhibition are these massive scale dioramas um, that refer to these fantastical scenes of nature or um, appear like the, the kind of um, the displays you'd see at a natural history museum of animals and, and figures. But then he's also incorporated these found photographs um, and uh, texts. And then, of course, his caravan, which becomes a kind of gypsy um, artist studio, which will be in one of the galleries, too. So his exhibition is really taking on a grand scale. You'll really get a sense of his, um, uh, of his prowess in, in theater building and constructing these dramatic sets and really creating these theatrical dramatic scenes um, and you know what he's going to be what he's thinking about throughout this work is the way that we experience different kinds of histories um, and placing that within the context of a contemporary art museum and, and upending our expectations of what a museum is particularly a museum like this um, by offering another kind of museum I think is a very interesting project and it's one that's really going to engage our visitors in different ways.